Hi friends, myself Subrotan Mukherjee and today I will discuss about the capital structure theories. Under capital structure theory, we have four different approaches. The net income approach, the net operating income approach, the traditional approach and the MM hypothesis or Modignani Miller approach or hypothesis. What is the basic difference among these four different approaches? The first two approach that is the net income approach and net operating income approach suggest or deals with the valuation of the firm. Whereas the traditional approach and MM hypothesis deals with the cost of e cost of capital. The NI approach suggests that the value of the firm increases as we increase the quantum or quantity of debt in the capital structure. The N NOI that is the net operating income approach suggests that the value of the firm is independent of its capital structure. That is the quantity of debt or quantity of equity will have no impact on the value of the firm. The traditional approach suggests that the cost of capital will decrease first start decreasing when the quantity of debt is increased in the capital structure. But after some time. If the debt is increased further, the cost of capital will start shooting up. It will start increasing. And MM hypothesis says that the cost of capital is independent of its capital structure. The cost of capital remains fixed. The mathematical deduction and the graphical representation will be discussed in detail. One concept arises about the valuation, valuation of the firm how we have to determine. Let me give one simple example. Say you have given certain amount of money to me. You have lended some money to me. I have borrowed the money from you. And at the end of the year, I pay rupees 10,000 to you. And the rate of interest, I say to be 10%. So all of you have calculated what is the quantum of money that you have lended me. How you have arrived? You have Put rupees 10,000 in the numerator and 10% at the denominator. So value of the loan given to me is 10,000 by 10% is rupees 1 lakh. So this is how the valuation is done by capitalizing the earnings. So if you want to calculate the value of equity, you need to capitalize the earning which is available to equity shareholder by cost of equity that is net income by KE. If you want to value the debt, it will be capitalized. The interest that earnings of the debt holder will be capitalized by cost of debt that is interest by KD. This is value of debt and how the value of firm is determined by capitalizing the earning which is available before interest and tax and it will be capitalized by cost of capital KO. Now come to the graphical representation in NI approach. In NI approach, I have taken in the Y axis the cost of capital and in X axis the degree of leverage that is debt by equity. The cost of debt is fixed, is, is constant. The cost of equity is also taken as constant. And as we increase the quantum of debt in the capital structure, the cost overall cost of capital starts decreasing. So KO will start decreasing. So this is the graphical representation under NI approach. Under NOI approach, the cost of debt is constant. So the mathematic, uh, the graphical representation of NOI approach and MM hypothesis is the same. In NOI approach, the value of the firm is constant. And in MM hypothesis, the cost of capital is independent of its capital structure. So cost of debt is constant, cost of capital is constant and cost of equity is increases because the risk perception among the equity holders increases. In NI approach, as we increase the quantum of debt in the capital structure, the cost of capital decreases. 
but here it increases because the risk perception among the equity shareholders increases. In traditional approach, the cost of capital at first decreases with the increase in the debt in the capital structure and then it starts increasing after a threshold limit. So this is a king shape curve and the graphical representation as I have said the NOI approach and the MM hypothesis will have the same graphical representation. Now the mathematical deduction. In NI approach the first step is to find out the value of equity. So how the value of equity is calculated? The, to capitalize the earning which is available to equity shareholder that is the net income as the approach suggests. The net income means the earning which is available to the equity shareholder will be capitalized by cost of equity or KE. The step 2 is to find out the value of debt that is VD is equal to interest by KD. KD. We are capitalizing the interest by cost of debt. And value of the firm is the summation of value of equity and value of debt. So you need to remember the three steps. Number one, under NI approach, you need to first calculate the value of equity. That is NI by KE. Step two, find the value of debt. That is interest by KD. And then you need to find the value of the firm, which is sum total of value of equity plus value of debt. Under NOI approach, as I have said, the value of the firm remains constant of its capital structure, independent of its capital structure. So the value of the firm is taken as constant. So value of the firm will be calculated first. The step one is to find the value of the firm, that is EBIT by KO. So what is the earning which is available to the firm? This is the NOI that is net operating income which is equal to earning before interest and tax and this will be capitalized by KO not by KD or KE it will be capitalized by KO. Step 2 is to find out the value of the debt and the value of equity is the residual value by deducting the value of debt from value of the firm. This value of equity will not be kept calculated separately. Rather, it will be the residual value that is VF minus VD. In traditional approach, the overall cost of capital or weighted average cost of capital is calculated by multiplication of weight of debt into cost of debt plus weight of equity into cost of equity. So KO is equal to WD into KD plus WE into KE. Try to remember this. This is the weighted average cost of capital, how it is calculated. And in MM hypothesis, you need to remember that when the debt is zero, the cost of capital is equal to cost of equity. In MM hypothesis deals with the cost of capital. So that will be fixed. It will be independent of the capital structure. So KO will be equal to KE because when a firm is started there will be equity and no debt. So whatever equity is there at the initial stage of the firm, whatever the cost of equity is there at that point of time, that is the cost of capital and it will not change with the increase of debt in the capital structure. This is the fundamental thing that you need to remember. And the cost of capital will be fixed at KE when debt is zero. And you need to find out the cost of equity that I have shown in this. You see this graph. I have discussed that the cost of Capital and cost of debt is constant. So cost of equity is only changing under NOI approach and the, this graphical representation is applicable for MM approach also. So cost of equity is to be calculated under MM hypothesis. So KE is equal to KO minus WD into KD by WE. So this is nothing new I have calculated. 
from this equation that is ko is equal to wd into kd plus we into ke from here i have taken the value of ke so ke is equal to ko minus wd into kd divided by we this is very simple i have deduct derived this ke from this equation so ko will be fixed kd will be fixed so only thing that will change is the value of ke so value of ke will change with at different level of quantity of debt in the capital structure so this is a refined formula so alternatively you can also find the val, uh, cost of equity by this equation also which is equal to ko plus ko minus kd into d by s this is the formula which is available or which is given in any textbook hope you have enjoyed this video if you have any query then you can post your query or you can send a mail to me at subroto9019 at the rate gmail.com thank you